Professor Funmi, the mic is yours. Thank you so very much. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. Uh, let me just say what a pleasure it is uh, to be part uh, of this August gathering um, and to be seeing a number of old friends uh, for the first time uh, in a very long time, especially during this, uh, this pandemic period. I, I think I want to make three sets of points uh, in, in talking about this wonderful collection of essays. Those who have seen the book would have seen my own um, would have seen the blob uh, that I, I did uh, for this book, as Professor uh, Zelezza was just saying. And I think really that is a reflection of how I found uh, this collection of essays. Uh, you have seen uh, a body of work that has brought us full circle. Professor Zeleza, um, in the last few minutes, talked about uh, the different parts of, of this book. But he starts a story uh, from modern day United States, which at the time had <laughs> Donald Trump uh, at the heart of it, uh, and the portrayal of Africa in that, um, within that regime says so much about the kind uh, of identities uh, that Africa has, you know, uh, been portrayed at over the last few centuries. But what's really uh, important for me at this moment is to try to connect uh, two sets of things. I think two or three of the parts of this book will help us solidify uh, the place that Africa finds itself today. There's an interdisciplinary uh, story there. There's a historical account that is so solid and is so relevant uh, to today. But I, I want to talk about the decolonization of knowledges and connect that to the internationalization of education and the place of higher education in Africa today. And I, I think that interpretation, of course, is one part of this story. And I expect, uh, of course, that our other colleagues here uh, would do justice to, to the other segments. And as I do that, it's important that I read to you how uh, Professor Zeleza talks about the project for knowledge decolon decolonization. Uh, you'll find that um, in that part of the book, uh, the e version that I have places it at page 223. Ever since Africa's modern encounters with Europe in the 15th century, African thinkers have confronted the epistemic challenges of Eurocentrism not to mention the existential and economic threats of European imperialism more generally. Eurocentrism frames African humanity and history as less than a mimetic and perpetually infantile and becoming Europe. The epistemological, ontological, and historiographical tropes of Eurocentrism permeate intellectual and popular discourses on Africa, which distort, disparage, and demean African realities, uh, lives, and experiences. Predictably, Eurocentrism has elicited countervailing affirmations of Africa and Africanness, of African purity, parity, and personhood, defiant assertions of African difference from Europe, sameness with Europe, and authenticity without Europe. The impulses and imperatives for refashioning the Eurocentric narratives on, about, and for Africa have mutated during the long historical geographies of slavery, colonialism, and neocolonialism. These three moments constitute the conjunctures through which the unequal exchanges and engagements, confrontations, and contestations between the African and European worlds were produced and reproduced. Clearly, the way these eras were experienced in different parts of Africa varied. Consequently, the trends, tempos, and textures of responses and resistances to Eurocentric knowledges and reclamations and reconstructions of Africa-centered knowledges differed. I, I wanted to do this because as you go through these essays, uh, you begin to, it's palpable. You, you feel uh, the importance of this particular moment in African history where these three eras have positioned Africa in particular ways and have caused a particular interpretation of this vast continent 
these lovely peoples, these well-meaning and knowledgeable peoples in a particular frame in the Western mind, in the mind of a Western leader, um, whose country itself at the point in time, maybe even so now, is so heavily polarized. And they have to look outside of that country to find a way to reposition their own country. You can say the same of uh, European uh, settings as well, where Brexit as defined in that book, as, uh, as explained in that book, has brought about another kind of moment. But everyone, every leader, every nation outside of Africa is in search of an African agenda to define itself. But Africa itself, as this book begins to, you know, uh, to, to show us through those different essays, has had enough of its own upheavals, has had enough of its own lessons to begin to come to a moment in the 21st century where we have to ask, and the debate today is whether Africa can reclaim this century. And the place of higher education and internationalization is where I want to um, stop my own intervention. Because unless uh, we do as, uh, you know, some of these essays tell us, return to that history in order that we can redefine and reimagine the continent for ourselves, but do so as Africans located in Africa and in the diaspora, where today the contestation about who's an African is what we started some of the conversations on the sides of this meeting talking about. It's why we see the events in SOAS being so heated because we have not yet engaged a new generation of Africans about the importance of this continent, about the fact that we must define for ourselves what is Africanness separate from questions of blackness. And so in the diaspora and on the continent, these essays tell the labor the struggle that we confront as we try to redefine and reclaim the 21st century. I loved reading the essays and I will advise those of us in the university space to begin to ask of our students to put books like this, put Codestria on the map, put the African institutions uh, that are going to help us confront these various interpretations of Africa since slavery to colonial times and to today, uh, that we put those on the map of our universities on the continent and bring the next generation to us and see the diaspora as a very important part of this debate. And because this author has really traversed three different or four different you know, regions of the world, he has given us such uh, an explicit account of the kind of challenges that we face uh, in this century. Internationalization therefore in our universities must foreground Africa as the place where you have to imagine a particular kind of world and you have to look at Africa in a global context and place it at the center of what we do if we must conquer this uh, particular century. And that's why I referred in my own blog uh, to Paul Zeleza as, uh, as a global African who has really uh, used his own historical accounts and his own reflections of these sorts of moments in the book to help us try to redefine this very moment in the 21st 